actor Philip Boyd. Philip, how hey, are you? Hey, Paul, how you doing today? Doing great. Doing man. well. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And, and, and I watched the season finale with my wife, and and all I was saying is Tyler Perry has done it again. I mean, it, it was crazy. It was good. It was dramatic. It was everything you can ask for in a season finale. Talk about that. Man, I tell you what, we, you know, going through the season, you don't get the scripts right away, so you have to wait and see what happens later on. And when that came out, we were all just like, wow, what is wrong with you, Mr. Perry? <laughs> was, was that the first time you saw the episode on Tuesday, or had you seen it before? No, that was the first time I get to see it, too. I get to see it when you guys see it. Okay, okay. What was your thoughts when you saw it? Man, I, you know what? It's I go I go along for the ride as long as, I mean, it's when the fans go along for the ride. It was kind of a, uh, you know, I always get weird about watching myself on TV, but with the finale, I thought it was really, really good. I just like to watch my friends on there, you know, Tika okay. and Crystal and John and all those guys. They're awesome. For sure. And, you know, they say numbers never lie. And here's the numbers. 3.7 million people watch the show, the highest ever in the history of the show, highest ever in OWN history. Tuesday was the Ooh. highest rated night in the history of OWN. Again, numbers don't lie. How's it feel to be a part of history? Oh, man, that's great. That's exciting. I uh, Although I don't think those 3.8 million people are going to um, like my character too much now after the season finale. No, no. My wife doesn't like you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of people out for blood, man. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to next season, though. For sure. And and let me ask you this about the you know next season and the season finale. And I, I got to ask you this, and you can keep it between – we can keep it between us. We don't have to tell anybody. But does Quincy uh-huh. finally die? Does he finally die? <laughs> I know he got stabbed pretty good in the season finale, man. He, he he took a stabbing. I mean, if he gets up from that, I'll be very surprised. <laughs> I will too, but he's kind of like uh, 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 you, you watch a horror movie and uh, – they, they always come back, no matter what happens. He, he runs into a house with the car. He gets into a car accident with Benny. I mean, this this guy, no matter what happens, he still finds a way to rise. So I, I think he's still alive. I don't know. We'll see. But, I mean, but I he's think like he's the Terminator. Alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're talking yeah. to one of the stars of, of Tyler Perry's hit show, The Haves and the Have Nots, actor Philip Boyd. And uh, let me ask you this now, and we, we saw on Twitter you going, you will be back next season. You also told me off air that you guys have already shot next season, so next season is already done. Yeah, we already shot it. Tyler Perry likes to move quick, man. And uh, sure. I guess, you know, next season is just as good as uh, this season was, so I'm really looking forward to you guys checking it out from what I hear from Tyler. A bigger role for you? Um, you know, I'm going to say that, that Oscar's character, Brandon, which I'm sure that people are going to call him Oscar for a long time, which is fine. <laughs> um, and that, and that's fine. I think we make reference to it in next season as well. Um, I know that Candace, Tika Sumner, wonderful actress is going to be, um, on the hunt for Oscar's character. She's not going to let that go. For sure. I mean, he wiped her out with, about four million dollars. <laughs> you know what? I kind of saw that coming. I kind of saw that coming. Yeah, I think a lot of people did in the very beginning. They're like, "I don't trust that man. I don't trust that white yeah. devil. I don't." You know? <laughs> I was reading a lot of the tweets, and I was just like, "Wow, <laughs> <laughs> these guys got it figured out already." For but, sure. Uh, for for sure. Went on. I think I think we played a little bit of a you know cat and mouse game where people didn't know for sure. They had their suspicions, but yeah, I think we played it where people. We're kind of guessing, even up to the end yeah. in, the, in the plane ride, when I was like, you know what, I'm coming back, I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, I get yeah. that. But but here's what also, you know, watching your character, and, you know, this is a kind of a dangerous thing for me. I mean, I got my wife here, and, and, and I see how you charmed Candace. And, and after <coughs> seeing that, you know, I, I got my wife, and, you know, I, I got to keep my wife away from a guy like you. Other guys are probably going to keep their girls from a guy like you. I mean, you charmed Candace, you tricked Candace, and ultimately, man, you got her money. But now, moving forward, from my standpoint, 
I got to stay away from a guy like uh, uh, Oscar slash Philip Boyd. I mean, you're you're a charming guy. You might steal my wife. I mean, come on, that's that's definitely a character, man. I I'm <laughs> very much a person that likes to uphold the, you know, the law of the land as far as that goes. I, I don't I don't mess with that. That's that's just a, a thing of mine. <laughs> um, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun character to play, you know. Was, uh, you know, and and then I watched that movie Focus with Will Smith, and I'm like, now that's a con man. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that movie or not, but it was a great movie. I haven't seen it, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. I'll, I'll most definitely take your word for it. Uh, let me ask you this: you you played this role to a T, and you, you know this character kind of took off. Were you were you surprised by that? I was. I definitely. You know, I mean, the haves and have not fans. Let me tell you, are the best fans out there that I've ever been a part of for a show, and. You know they're very loyal to the to their uh, actors, and so when a new guy comes on the show, you never know how they're going to respond. If they're going to welcome him, or if they're going to be like, you know, what is Tyler doing bringing, you know, this guy on the show? You just you just don't know. And uh, you know, this is the first for me to get such an overwhelming response from the have and have nots community, and you know, I'm blessed to be a part of it. I can't sure. thank Tyler Perry enough for that. And let's talk about Tyler Perry. I mean, he's done big things on the big screen, done big things on the small screen, done big things in the play world as well. He's accomplished, and no doubt about it. What impresses you the most about Tyler Perry? Oh, man, his imagination and his his will for people to do better in life. You know, there's just a lot of things that, that don't get put in the media about Tyler Perry, about the – the uh, charity work that he's done and the and the people he's helped out in his life and the way he's paid paid it forward his success to other people like I can't say enough good things about Mr. Perry he's truly a gift and I I'm so thrilled to be able to call him my friend. Wow, that's good. That's big time. And yeah, as we said, you're doing big time things with the haves and the have nots. We're talking to one of the stars of the haves and the have nots, actor Philip Boyd and. So let, let's go to sports now. I mean, you're 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 yeah, an Atlanta man. guy. You're a Georgia guy. Yeah. You're 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 an Atlanta Falcons fan. Your Falcons are off to a two and zero start. Matty Ice got it done against the Philadelphia Eagles week one, and Matty Ice came on back in week two, and and you know came back against the New York Giants. How you feeling about the two and zero Falcons at this point? Man, I'm telling you right now, whoever has Julio Jones and Roddy White on their fantasy team are doing a good job. For sure. You know, <laughs> even Matty Ice. Um, I'm excited about it. This season, you know, Dan Quinn, when he first came on, you know, you don't really know uh, how a, a coach is going to do. But I do know this. I do know that, uh, you know, defense wins championships, and he was a defensive coordinator over at Seattle. So I'm I'm pretty excited about it, man. So you, you feel like this is a, a playoff football team? Oh, without a doubt. I definitely know the Falcons will be in the playoffs this year. I don't know if they'll win the Super Bowl, but uh, I know they'll be up there, you know, front runners, contenders. Okay. So you, you think, you feel like, I mean, you got the Carolina Panthers 2-0 and right now in the NFC South. You feel like that's the best football team in the NFC South? Right now, the way they're playing? Yeah, absolutely, man. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, let, I'm liking that. They're exciting to watch. Let, let me ask you this, and, and let, let's just go through this exercise real quick. You want to run throughout, run down their schedule, and we'll see wins and losses, and we'll see if they're actually going to make the playoffs. You want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Let's do okay. it right now. Okay. okay. We we got week three at Dallas. Dallas. You know, no Tony at Romo, Dallas. no Des Bryant. But I, I think the Cowboys are a tough football team. I think Dallas actually wins this game. What are your thoughts? Falcons win? No, Falcons win for sure. Okay, so they're three and zero after week three. Okay, let's go to week four. You got the Texans coming to town. Houston struggling. You win that one. Win that one too. Okay, so you're four and zero after four weeks in the National Football League. Let's go to Week Five. You got the Redskins coming to town. Another victory. I'm telling you right now, my favorite number is number five. Five and zero. <laughs> okay, five and zero. Let's go to Week yep. Six. Week Six. Excuse Woo! me. At New Orleans. At New Orleans, Saints are struggling. Zero and two at this point in time. Not playing very well. You win that game. Saints have always been a tough team for the Falcons. I'm going to say that's going to be a tough one, so they might not win that one. 
Okay, you're five and one at this point after week six. Week seven at Tennessee, Marcus Mariota and the Tennessee Titans. You know, I gotta go. I gotta go with the Titans on that one. Okay, Sorry. so you're five and five and two, five and two. Yep. Okay, week eight, Tampa comes to to the dome. You win that. Yep. Yeah, Six we win that two. one. Okay, at San Francisco, week nine. I mean, how how can you not win in the Bay Bay Area? I mean, come on, <laughs> okay. Atlanta's gonna win that one. Okay, seven to two. Week ten is a bye week. We're at week eleven. We're seven and two. We have the Colts and Andrew Luck coming to town. Mm, that's gonna be a tough game. Be a tough game. I, I think we might we might uh, go down on that one. Okay, you're seven and three now. Week twelve, yep. the Vikings come to the dome. What happens? W. Okay, eight Prime and three. Uh, eight and three. Okay, we, we got yep. at Tampa. Week thirteen, you're eight and three at this point. You got Tampa. What happens? Tampa's gonna want some revenge for the ass kicking we put on them back in uh, you know week eight. So uh, I think we still beat them. But okay, goal. so okay, so we're nine and three at this point. Nine and three, yep. four games to play. Nine and three. Okay, week fourteen, the nine and three Atlanta Falcons go to the Carolina Panthers. Cam and the boys, you win that. Carolina takes that one. Okay, so nine and four at Jacksonville, week fifteen. We got that one locked up. Okay, ten and four, Carolina, in Atlanta. You win that. Oh, we're whipping, we're whipping that ass that time. Yeah. Okay, so so you're eleven and four in the final game of the season. You got the New Orleans Saints coming to the Falcons. Can we say? Yeah, we're going to be on a hot. We're going to be on a hot streak then. We're taking that one too. So at the end of the day. You, we're saying 12-4 and four for the Atlanta Falcons for the 2015 NFL season. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Yeah, what do you I think? I hope you're right. 12-4. and four, I hope I'm mm, right, too. That's ambitious. That's ambitious because I look at that division, and, and I didn't expect the Falcons to be 2-0 and at this point in time, but I think it's a team still with some deficiencies. I, I'm still not sold on that defense. I mean, I, I love, you know, obviously Julio Jones and Roddy White, and I love Matt Ryan, but that defense is 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 not a solid good defense. I mean, it, it, it's improved, but is it good enough to win 12 football games? Woo! I don't know. Hey, I, well, I, here's I'm the thing, a, man. It's all, go ahead. It's all about the ball. You know, defense is, is what wins championships. I mean, it, it, it's been throughout the whole history of time, I think. You know, I was worried about sure. our offensive line, to be honest with you. I didn't think we had a very strong offensive line to start out with. But they proven me wrong. Yeah, I mean, the offensive line is better. But, you know, I see a lot of quick throws with the Atlanta Falcons. But they're better. They're better. But are they good enough? And I guess over the long haul, we'll see. I think you lose this week, but we'll see. you got your boys going 12-4. and four. So 12-4, and four, obviously that wins the NFC South. That might even give you a first round buy. So you might be one of the top uh two seeds in the NFC. Is it possible that the Atlanta Falcons, dare I say Super Bowl fifty? In your mind I don't know, man. Hey man, if if we get to twelve and four and we get a buy the first week, we're gonna have to revisit this phone call. Okay. Okay. If if you're twelve and four, we most definitely have to revisit this phone call because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. I don't yeah. think that's happening, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, All right. like you said, yeah, they're, off, they're off to a good start. You're the expert. I'm just a daydreamer. <laughs> Let me ask you this now. I mean, you're an athlete. You were an athlete growing up, and I believe your grandfather played baseball in the 30s. I mean. He did, yeah. yeah. So, Back to the Washington are, Senators. Are, are you a big-time baseball guy? Or can you play baseball yourself? I know you, 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 you played in high school, I believe. Uh, how good of a baseball player were you? Well, I, you know, I started playing baseball when I was four years old, and then uh, my hopes was to make it to the major leagues like my grandfather, my great grandfather, and um, it just didn't happen. You know, I got to be honest with you. When you get to that level, I mean, it's all about hard, hard work, and those people are so talented and so quick and just, you know, accurate. It, it's it's really hard to compete at that level. So I my hat is off to anybody playing professional baseball. 
I mean, that's, I mean, if you think about it, baseball is the hardest sport to make it in professionally. It's tough. It's most tough. I think just because of all the all the minor league systems that you have, you know, you have right. AAA, double A, single A, and then you got the big show. And then, you know, football. It's, you come out of college, you go straight to the NFL. Basketball. You come out of high school sometimes and go straight to the NBA. So, you know, hockey. You can play as a high schooler. I've seen. You know. <laughs> So it, it, baseball is a really tough sport to make it to the big show. And I know people think it's boring and stuff like that, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's physically demanding. For sure. And, and, and I'll disagree slightly. I think basketball is because of numbers. I'll say purely because of numbers. And, and it's become more – and baseball is a world game as well. But I think basketball is more of a world game too. And, and, and I think, you know, you're not only competing against guys uh, domestically, but you're competing against guys internationally. So it, it, I think basketball is the toughest to get into because of numbers. Because only, what, 15 guys on a roster? So numbers-wise, yeah, but let's be, let's be but let's be honest, though. If you're 6'7", if 6'8", you're 6'10", six seven, six six even 7 feet, I guarantee the NBA team is going to take you and, and just see if they can work with you just because of your physical you know, height. Yeah, you'll, you'll definitely physical, get a look. Yeah, I mean, if you're in baseball, you know, nobody's going to look at you if you're seven feet tall. You <laughs> know what I mean? Johnson like. <laughs> yeah, Randy Johnson one. You know, there's maybe <laughs> two up. But in basketball, it's kind of like, you know, you got an advantage if you're, you know, physically sure. domineering as far as that goes, you know? For sure. For sure. It's almost like an added yeah, bonus. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, height, size and, and height does matter, and it definitely helps if you want to get into the National Basketball Association. We're talking to one of the stars of the haves and the have-nots, uh, Philip Boyd. And, and Philip, obviously, big things with the haves and the have-nots. You're doing big things there. But what else is going on with you? What else is next for Philip Boyd? Well, there's a movie that I did back uh, a while ago, about a year ago. This, I think it's going to be coming out in selected theaters. It's called The Wrong Side of Right. Uh, I have a supporting role in that, and that's with Leah Thompson, a girl named Allison Page, Jason Blair, um, and James Raymar. And that's called The Wrong Side of Right. And I think it's going to be out in a couple of theaters soon. And also there's another movie that's probably going to be out in January or February, and it's called Jesse and Naomi. And that's with uh, Mary Lou Henner, Corbin Burnson, and one of my good friends, Chelsea Crisp, who's on this new show on ABC called Fresh Off the Boat, who just got renewed for their second season. They just started that up. And um, she's one of the stars of that show. And she is just a, a pleasure to be around and a pleasure to watch. And another guy named Joe Williamson, who's a great friend of mine, he's in that movie as well. And we just got a – actually, I just got a rough cut of it, and I just got to see it. And it's actually really good. I think people are going to be pleased with it. Completely different character than my okay. character on the haves and the have not. <laughs> so it, it's a good time to be Philip Boyd right now. It's a good time. Well, you know, I mean, we have our downtime, too. You know, I haven't, I haven't worked in, in, in a while, but I'm gearing up to start, you know, doing something else soon as well. How, how'd that role come about, uh, Oscar, the role of Oscar? How'd that come about for you? Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is going to be one of those Hollywood stories that everybody listens to and, like, wow, dreams do come true and stuff like that. <laughs> so I was working in this restaurant, a uh, really upscale restaurant, in uh, West Hollywood, big celebrity clientele. And I was bartending there, and Tyler Perry happened to be standing by the bar. And the next day, I was going to go back to Atlanta, actually, and run a Tough Mudder race with my younger brother. Okay. And he was standing right by the bar, and I said, Hey, Mr. Perry, I said, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you doing the great things that you're doing for Atlanta with the film industry. You know, I think it's great. I said, I'm actually going back there tomorrow to run a Tough Mudder. He goes, Oh, that's great. I'm I'm actually running a Spartan race for my birthday. I said, oh, cool, man. Well, you know, congrats. Good luck with that. Nice to meet you. That was it, right? Wow. 45-second conversation. So six months later, I get a text message. How was a tough mutter? I was like, who, who, the, who the hell is this? <laughs> you know? Uh, and he goes, it's Tyler Perry. He goes, listen, man, I, I was writing this uh, character for the haves and the have-nots, and your face popped in my mind. Wow. And he goes, I, I, I was wondering if you'd like to audition for it. And I said, well, yeah, I'd love to hear about the role, you know, and, and see what you got 
in store, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to audition for it. So he, he said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some pages. And I looked at him, and I was like, all right, this, this actually looks pretty entertaining. I like this. So I went over to the casting director's office, um, and I think he sent a bunch of other guys over there as well. But, you know, the opportunity was there, and I went and I read for it. They sent him the tape, and he was like, you know, you are Oscar. You are this guy. Wow. And so um, I was like, wow, this is, you know, like a dream come true. Thank you so much. Just elated, man. Yeah. Wow. Right place, right time. Right place, right time. Yeah, for sure. So, so it, it, it's all, I mean, yeah, I guess it, it was men. It was, it was, it was destiny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, some things just happen like that in my life, man. It's just, it's just been something that you can't control, you know, but you got to put your plate, you put yourself in the right place at the right time, I guess. And then opportunity strikes. That's luck, I guess. And you do a little modeling as well, right? Well, I don't know about that. I, you know, okay. I'm, I'm sitting in front of the camera for a couple of photographers, but I have never gotten paid to do a modeling <laughs> job, no. Okay, okay. Are you single? Uh, right now, yes, I, I am single, yeah. Okay, okay. I've been, um, I've been very, uh, I've been a hermit this summer, to be honest with you. I, All right. I've been actually working on a couple of features, working, writing them. So I've been really focused on that. No time for love. No time for that. Well, you know, I think that that sort of thing, if you chase it, it's sort of you attract the wrong thing. So you kind of just wait and see what happens. And the universe always has a good way of revealing itself to you when, you, when you're when you ready for things to happen. Uh, let, let me ask you this now. I mean, after this Oscar role, has has the, the interest increased on some level? Well, I would say that, yeah, there's been some people that have reached out that uh, – I wouldn't normally have heard from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, that's got to be a good thing. Yeah, it's interesting, you know. It's you know, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I would also, you know, gather that you're getting a lot more interest maybe from the African-American side after this particular role. Yeah, you know, <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to interact with that demographic, you know. Um, for sure. Yeah, it, it is. It's, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm from Atlanta, so it's, I'm not. <laughs> right, you know, definitely. You know, it's a big community for that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So fans, fans, and those who are single, make sure you go to uh, his Twitter page, <laughs> hit him up on Twitter, <laughs> at Philip K. Boyd. Support this man. Support all the great things going on with this man. He's doing big things on Tyler Perry's hit show, The Haves and The Have Nots. Also, make sure you go to his website, philipboyd.net, and support this man. He's doing big things. You said you, you, you guys already shot the next season. Now, are you guys going to be shooting the season after that shortly at some point? You know, I just spoke to, to uh, Tyler Perry the other day. And um, he had made mention that he's going to start writing the next uh, few seasons. So uh, okay. I, I don't know when we'll be going back, but I think it'll be sometime next year. Next year, okay. To film, the, right. film a couple more episodes. Okay, all right. So hopefully we'll see some more of Philip Boyd. Fans, again, support this man. He's doing big things on Tyler Terry's The Haves and The Have Nots. And he's got some other things going on as well. Got some movies coming. So. Make sure you look out for this man, Philip Boyd. Philip, pleasure talking to you, man. Wish you nothing but the best of luck moving forward. Let's do it again in 12 and 4. We, we, we're sure yes, about sir. that. Okay, 12 and 4. Yes, 12 and 4 it is. Let's do it again. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, man. Okay. I'm ready. All right, take care. Right. You too, Paul.